champion, Ray Corona. Would you start? All right, let's do it a little high. Poquito arriba. Right here is good. Right here is good. If you want to touch it up, let's do it now. God bless. Let's go to the tail of the tape. These are two young fighters. Balderas is the prospect here, but he's the older man in the ring. He's 23, as Jimmy Lennon mentioned. Very good amateur background. Has a reach advantage, significant reach advantage, 73 inches to 68. He's 5'9". Yaron is only 5'4". Yaron, 20 years old, 13 and 1, comes off his first pro loss, but 80 amateur fights as well. Turned pro at the age of 16. Balderas, though, the accomplished amateur. Nearly 200 amateur fights. Starts off with a stiff jab. And Joe Goosen, as we mentioned, made the 2016 Olympics. Ended up losing in the quarterfinals after two wins. Closed captioning is available for tonight's telecast. If you'd like to hear the boxing broadcast in Spanish, you can click over to the simulcast on Fox Deportes. Well, already, uh, you know, Carlos... Uh, 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 Balderas landed a good left hook uh, when uh, Giron dropped his right hand there a few seconds ago. So he's got a wicked left hook, uh, Balderas, and he likes to throw it. He likes to throw good left hooks to the body, left uppercuts and left hooks. He really works that left hand over time. So, you know, if, if uh, Giron is smart, he's going to keep those hands up real high. Giron already able to counter with some shots of his own with a hook, counter hook, able to explode. See the good jab from Balderas. Comes off a fight where he fractured his right hand early in a fight, 30 seconds into a what ended up being a seventh round KO over Robert Frankel. So imagine you put Lennox breaking your hand and then saying, "All right, I got to stay in this fight." Got his fifth straight knockout. Yeah, I mean that's the wise thing to do. Certain boxers can't do it. That you know, once once you break, they break their hands. They they're looking for a way out. But Balderas is uh, coming out with unbelievable speed and sharpness. He's, he's looking really good. He's, he was really up for this fight, especially uh, in, the, in the fighters meeting. He was saying he was up for this fight. He was excited about it. He can't wait to get in there. And as you can see, he's ready. I think he's one of the best young prospects out there right now. He's 9-0 with eight knockouts. And he's got a, he's got a really good, calm style. See, nothing really affects him. He, he kind of keeps his composure, keeps his right hand up real good. Now, he's got a big reach right now. He's got a 73-inch reach against, you know, uh, Garon's 68-inch uh, reach. So, you know, he, he can allow, he can afford to kind of paw out there with that jab and hold him off with it. Nice three-punch combination there by Balderas. But I tell you what, Yaron, Yaron has a real hook, fellas. Oh, oh good right hand by Balderas. Well, not only a, a left hook, but he's got a right hand, as we can see. So that was a good straight, good powerful right hand straight across. And Garon didn't even see it. Rowan now fighting smaller, trying to crouch and get inside against the taller man. Nice uh, crisp action here in round number one, scheduled for eight. Just getting underway and leading up to the main event. Again, Harrison Charlo two. There's the hook from your own once again. The body work there. Balderas again. Balderas trying to establish the distance here. Again, here's where the prospect comes in, in a rarity where he is three years older than the man he is fighting. Very different opponent and a good opening round here tonight on Fox. We're Jack Day. Well, here you go, Lennox. Look, nice left hook by Garone, but that got inside Balderas's hand. Now, his hand was up nice, and here comes a right hand back from Balderas. Now, both guys scored really well in that first round, at least in that instance there. Yeah, I mean, you know, he had his hands up in a defensive position to block that punch. I know what that feels like. And then all of a sudden he's come around the punch with, with a, a left hook and catch them on, on his chin. And that can happen. Yeah, and here's, here's Garone right now. He's He's got to start putting a little bit more pressure on. It's an eight-round fight. Um, and, and he can't really let uh, Balderas use that long reach of his. No, I mean, uh, you know, he's standing in the middle of the, the ring trying to figure out how does he get in against him. And uh, he needs to really back him up against the ropes a little bit more or even closer to the ropes so Balderas can't, you know, jump away. And this is, this is, this is a spot where he needs to do the work, right there where he knows he can escape and he can, you know, apply the pressure and actually throw some body punches and some good combination, obviously leading to the head. 
And now remember, Balderas, uh, you know, is is a top amateur too. But you know, Giron had 180 amateur fights himself, so he's he's not a he's not a you know an inexperienced fighter. He's had 14 pro fights, the seven knockouts. So you know, he, he knows his way around around the ring too. But he's gonna he's only got eight rounds though to crack the code here and to get to Balderas. Right now, Balderas is pretty much doing what he wants. Who is a good luck hook right there by Balderas, a nice lead left hook. I this like is coming off a theme as well, Joe, is what we saw if you were, anybody who was watching this on FS1. A lot of times you'll see the young prospect come in against a guy in his mid-30s who's tough but kind of on his way, you know, into the twilight of his career. This is interesting matchmaking. Hey, let's take on this 20-year-old from Mexico. It's very different. Hey, yeah, and, and, and the thing is with Balderas is he, you know what I like about him is that he'll sit in the pocket, even though he's taller, he just sat in the pocket with Giron and really did a good job at uh, kind of just, you know, uh, being very subtly evasive from some of the, the shots that Giron was going with the exception of one nice short jab that Giron and did. he doesn't he doesn't really need to sit in the pocket because no, you know he's you know it's not like Giron's going after him you know he can still have that movement and have that space around him to be able to move out of the way and come back with his shots no I, I think you're exactly right he's on the end of your budget good exchanges here your own suddenly a little more motivated going to the body and then answering with the head while Balderas is still able to stay at distance and throw some good crisp shots final 30 seconds here in round number two again nice matchup I said it's it's not the normal matchup but this is better let's find a guy with only one pro loss 20 years old obviously a lot of spring in his step a lot of power in his shots and Balderas being tested in his 10th pro fight Ooh. Hard body shots, good attack, crisp action and a right hand by Balderas punctuates round two. Here's Balderas coming with a straight left to the belly, kind of setting him off balance a little bit. And here comes a left hook back from Garon and landed. And of course, Balderas tried to counter as well right off that hook. Joe, do you prefer Giron or Giron? I know you're a, you're a cosmopolitan man of the of the universe. Yeah, <laughs> an um, urban sophisticate. How, how are we going with that? Since you've been to France. Yeah, I mean, I, I could go the uh, Giron. Giron. I mean, but you know, for sake of linguistics, let's just go Giron. Giron. Okay. Yeah. Get a G back in there. Right. <laughs> By the way, he walked in here and he said, "Look, I'm not going to let him breathe." I don't know if he's quite done that, Lennox, but he's he's thrown some hard shots. Oh, he's thrown some hard shots. He's you know he's he's a smart fighter. He's you know he gets away from shots and he knows when to throw them, especially you know being so small and compact. You know he's using that size well. And I tell you what, I I'm surprised there by the copy box stats. If you were thinking again, Valderas is more of the boxer. He's going to outland Giron, but he has not as of yet. Giron is actually on top according to the punches thrown and punches land. Well, it, it, you know, guys that come in forward, they usually do throw more punches. You know, the guys that are, you know, going backwards are usually trying to line you up for something, you know. But even the body very, style, wouldn't you expect Balderas to be doing, you know, more of the punches at the volume? There's a good well, right see, hand. That's what I was and talking Chiron about. throwing body shots. But that's what I was talking about. He set him up to land that nice little right hand over the top. So you think accuracy is really what he's going for? That's right? what Just he's going for right shots. now, yeah. Right. And listen, this is a they, they, this is a big test uh, for Balderas. They did not throw in an easy uh, yeah. touch for him at all. You, no doubt. You, you said that earlier. And believe me, you know, for a, such a young guy, this is a tough, tough cat he's in there with right now. And think about what we said earlier. Again, Giron has 80 amateur fights and still turned pro at 16. That is an active teenager. Oh, yeah. It's been fighting. And right. he comes in here, he knows he's the opponent, but once the bell starts, this is a meritocracy, he can get to throw leather, and he's doing it right now. Oh, oh hard right hand body yeah. shot as well, and Balderas backs up. Balderas caught him with a good hook, though, on his way out of that little combo that happened. Garon took the lead, on, the initiative lead on that combination, but Balderas really landed a nice hook that I thought buckled him a little bit. Tell you, light, lightweight, too, fellas, is a field crowded with young talent. Yes. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Teofimo Lopez, Carlos Balderas wants to be in that mix. He's a little older, actually, 23, but you can see the level of skill. Being tested tonight. Corona has a wealth of uh, experience coming into this fight, and uh, he's using it. Uh, he's not easily to get hit. I mean, his defense is up, his hands is up, and, he's, and his eyes are good because he's seeing the punches come at him. Balderas with a wicked combination. Nice work. That was a good jab, right hand to the body, and then quick left hook. Now, he came out of there with that left hook with his right hand up, so that was smart. 
He, oh, oh. Shows. Giron puts Balderas down. He better get up. He is clear-headed, but no, hurt. Is he making he it? No, he can't Watch make it. He up, can't make it. Up. Can he take a step? No! Hands up. Walk towards me. You're going to continue. Time in. Time. Oh. oh Ray Corona asked that. the first time, and he didn't get the answer or the body movement that he wanted, and he gave him a second chance. What do we make of that? Listen, he shouldn't have let that... He shouldn't have let that fight go on because uh, he wasn't he wasn't ready. He was gonna let it go on, but you know you could see from ringside his eyes weren't there. Let's go back here, Lennox. Oh, yeah, you see the body shot. And then he comes up with the left hook. And, you know, uh, Balderas had that right hand up again, but he wasn't blocking it. And now here's the point that I want to make, Joe Goosen. Yeah. When a referee says, take a step toward me, and you fall backwards, the fight's over. Absolutely. You, you, don't, you don't say, all right, now take another step toward me. No, absolutely, you're right. Uh, I was really surprised well, that the referee was that. Here's the reason why. I think the referee knew. He already heard the 10-second warning sure he knew there was only seconds left maybe one or two seconds but left. are you supposed to take that now, into hold account? on hold on and that he knew that that bell was going to ring and he's going to have a minute to recover now he'll let the kid come back out if he gets cracked once or twice he'll stop the fight balderas was badly hurt you saw him right there was he able to clear his head in one minute he is already holding on for dear life Things taking a sudden turn. Balderas looked pretty good in that round. Had some crisp combinations, but he got caught with that hook. And Giron has real power. And you see Balderas already trying to clear his head. He's very game. His eyes were wide. He looked focused. He eats another hook and another one from Giron. Well, see, sometimes, and Lennox will tell you this, sometimes you can get hurt like that and you get hit a couple more times and it wakes you up. Yes. Giron firing power shots, winging them, hooks and uppercuts. This is his big chance. Should he pounce a little bit more, Lennox, or what do you think of what he's doing? Well, you know, he's doing a good job right now. He needs to keep his, hand, his, his hands up a little more. I would give him, you know, if, if I was in his position, I would move around and give myself a little breathing room. But obviously, he feels he doesn't need it. Well, you can see, I mean, if, if you're in this fight right now, Lennox, you see a hurt man in front of you, right? Oh, yeah. If I was Garon, I would be going after him yeah. like, like gangbusters because uh, it's very difficult to get your legs back onto you after uh, getting, getting hit like that. You can see he had every intention of getting up, but he wobbled backwards, and he's trying to keep his eyes clear, and he was going to get up at, like, 7 or 8, and then suddenly his body almost betrayed him because he was so wobbled. Complains about that being low, and he fires a low shot himself. So timeout is called. Ray Corona stops the clock. There was a low oh, shot. Yeah. Balderas Fine. complained about it, and Stay then he right said, there. you know what? I won't complain. How about I hit him low? I'm going to take that an evaluation. pretty much sums it up correctly, Take an Brian. evaluation. That was revenge. No more yeah. chances. No more chances. You hear me? No more chances. I'm going to take an evaluation, Mark. No, I, yeah. So okay. he's not taking the point. Ya he did it with him. Oh, he's... No vas a poner un otro revenge, no, okay? No, no, no. Si él pasa, va a quitar un punto, okay? Okay. okay? Porta bien, okay? Estás bien? Okay. Camina ya. Now let's see how low this was. Camina yeah, aquí. that's as low as it gets. That's a dirty shot. Joe, okay. do you think he should si have taken a point away? Vez, voy a quitar un punto, okay? No vas a hacer eso. Time in! Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's the discretion. They usually they'll give you one, okay? Uh, because he got touched a little bit low. Right back to work. Jerome got hit low. He comes right back at it. Still a lot of time left in this round four. Again, round three. Balderas almost did not get out of that round. Knocked down. Hit with a hook. Is in survival mode right now. But after he got hit low, took matters into his own hands. Yeah, but that was pretty blatant. It was a blatant shot. It, it, it was. And look, I mean, Ray Corona is not going to fool around. If uh, anything like that happens again, even close to that, he'll take a point, I guarantee it. Yeah, that's at the discretion of the referee. Uh, again, I'm just saying, as low as that was, as flagrant as that was, he'd be well within his rights to say, no, 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 I know you thought you just got hit low, but I'm taking a point away. I could have gone either way. Oh, great, Jerome 
coming to bear, has to have a lot more confidence now. He knows he's put Balderas down, slowing down the prospect already. This is supposed to be Balderas' night. Jerome has other ideas. Good uppercut by Jerome. Keep it out there. You get another sense, though, that if Balderas can buy himself a round or two, it, this could become a very different fight. Balderas firing back a little more clear-headed and firing back a meaningful hook and a right hand. Good stuff. Take a look again. He's Whoa. looking to the referee, Balderas, saying, hey, wait a second, I got hit low, so if you're not going to take care of it, I will. Not supposed to be able to do that. We're back after this. We've got an unexpected burner here. As it is Carlos Baldaris in the blue trunks, Rene Giron in the red trunks, and Giron putting Baldaris down at the end of round three. And again, referee Ray Corona allowed it to go on, even though he asked Baldaris to take a step toward him. He was unable to. Asked him a second time. And let's get Marcos Viegas in right now, who's scoring this fight for us. And maybe, Marcos, if you wish, weigh in on what we've seen from the referee in two different decisions there. Yeah, you know, uh, I would say, like, any other referee or, or maybe if you were to get an average of four referees they probably would have stopped that fight because he took a step back he didn't respond too well he looked like he was a little bit uh, glazed in the eye so you know it, it is ultimately up to the discretion of the type of referee and based on their experience how they see it so far i have this fight uh, one point by carlos balderas but that round number four was a close fight based on the aggression of Huron, and Huron is winging these punches and they're they're landing as well Marcos, thank you very much. Again, this is the discretion. We, we, Joe, Lennox, we, we were talking about this even during the break. Yeah. Disagreeing with each other, saying, do you stop that fight? Or do you say, hey, I almost got a minute here. I can buy a little time and the kid will get to the corner. I, I just don't think you're supposed to take that into account. Uh, you know, discretion of the referee. He's controlling the action in the ring. So if he's, you know, he's the one that, that decides all of this. And um, hey, look, we're I think I, at the end of the day, I think he made a good decision yeah. because we're in the that, fifth round. Right. That's why. We've got a great fight on our hands right now. Exactly. Gotcha. Look, if this is 1955, there's no question it keeps going. Or maybe, normally. Or maybe 2005. Yeah, could be. I, just, normally, there's a reason why you say take a step toward me. If you can't, you don't allow the man to continue. Referee uh, Ray Corona knew. All right, we have a few seconds left. There'll be a minute to buy some time here. And Balderas was able to do that. He's back in this fight and trading body shots with Jerome. Yeah, Jerome having success that. I tell you what, body shots, that body work, paying dividends already on Balderas. Well, when we were talking, you know, Balderas landed some nice right hands, some good left uppercuts. Um, he, he's back in this fight right now, and he's probably a little bit ahead in this round, the way I look at, at it. And, uh, you know, he needs this round, according to Marcus's uh, scorecards, that if he wins this round, it's going to be an even fight. At this point, there, there's two rounds left. That was Jerome, there three you see, see the copy box numbers against Jerome, well ahead, 90 to 66. Hey, yeah, we can disagree, fellas. I, I just disagree. I think we stopped that fight. Well, Good body shots by Jerome. Then we wouldn't be having this great fight to look that's at. That's true, right but now. then so, maybe the know. kid gets hurt too. You know, I, you, you've got to look. You don't know that's going to happen. Hey, for all you know, Valderas could come back and knock him out in this fight. Well, very possible, Joe. Very possible. Got a good scrap here already. You can see it. Valderas clearly being tested, and he is measuring up so far. There on the left is Errol Spence, welterweight champion of the world, in talking to. Jamel Charlo, we will talk one-on-one -on -one with Errol Spence coming up. Again, the first public interview he has done since his horrific car accident in October. Talk about his plans and basically talk about his health, how he is doing, uh, facial injuries in that horrifying accident. And we'll hear from the champ. We had a clash of heads there as we open up round six. So no cut. You hear Ray Corona. By the way, Giron in that last fifth round landing a fight high 28 punches, and the punch stats still go in favor of Rene Giron in the red trunks. You know, I, I have to say one thing where I see, you know, Valderas a little bit more vulnerable is that he's got that left hand low and the right hand up good. And and when when uh, uh, Giron throws that left hand, he should follow it up with a short, choppy right hand over the top. I, I agree with landed. you. I agree with you. And that's what that's one thing his corner is missing. Yeah. And should be telling him because you know now Valderas is worried about that left hook and he's focused on that. Now that's where you throw the right right hook or the right hand or the uppercut. You could be chopping right there on the ear with that right hand and that, but 
In the meantime, Balderas just landed some really nice shots, you know, so he's back in this fight. He's got his wits about him. Good left hook right there. And he's controlling the action from the outside again. There's a beautiful jab from Balderas, and that is able to score to your point, Joe. Hey, look, there's no question. And if you're looking uh, for a level of progression fight, you're certainly getting that. Getting a little more than you'd like, actually, if you're in Balderas' camp. Boy, I Another hook by Giron in the right hand, just grazing Giron. As great as a prospect as as uh, Balderas is, and as tough a fighter uh, as and competitor as Giron is, I'd be really worried in Balderas' corner just because of the power and the ferocity of Giron right now. You know, with, with, uh, oh, no with this young prospect. And, and again, Balderas. depending on what the judges are, are looking at, look, Giron has the advantage and the punch has landed. He's landing a lot of hard shots. But you see Balderas, to your point, Joe, is landing crisp, Did clean, you see easily Did you judged see that shots. that little left uppercut yep. he just stuck in there? Yeah, it was no really question. nice. And of course, it got Jerome's nose bleeding really badly right now, as you can see. Just that little left uppercut, it was about a three inch punch. Yeah, Balderas is doing a good job, especially with that jab to the belly, because that re it's a really offsetting punch. You know, he's, n he's not expecting it and, it, and he and he throws it, and, it's, and it, it, it kind of offsets Garon a little bit. Balderas with a hard right hand and then immediately dug the hook into the body. I think ba Balderas is really making a good account of himself uh, in this round here, right? Oh, now. and he showed character in the whole fight, Joe. I mean, we we're talking about should he be stopped. He did everything he could. He did not know where he was. He was in bad shape. Yeah. He has come back, cleared his head, and he is fighting very well. Yeah, and, and the other thing is he's been getting hit with that same left hook a few times, and he's taking it now. Oh! oh that, that, was that, oh. that was that left hook again. There's no way he's making this one. Seven. Wow. Oh. Eight. Nine. That's it. Ten. That's it. That is it. Balderas was trying to beat the count, but he did not make the move soon enough. And that hook ends it. And Jerome with a fabulous performance against a good prospect. Wow. Just as I said, he was taking, you know, absorbing the left hook. He gets seemingly, hit with a clean one right seemingly there. Seemingly was, one. Joe. Yeah. No question. But you see the power of Jerome. Balderas goes down. Another time, second time, barely escaped round three and got dropped there. And there's the danger of moving up a little too aggressively. Jeroen, only 20 years old, comes off a loss, but a very dangerous kid in his own right. Well, that's a great fight. Yeah, very good great fight. fight. And, and I bet Jerome probably trained a lot harder for this fight than the, the one he lost. I know he always trained, but, but this was a big, this was his debut out here on TV, and he was yep. going to make the best account for himself. I got to tell you, it was a dangerous move with this opponent. They made it. They paid for it. And uh, it, it's a tough, tough and loss. No, and no. how often do you see a guy say before the fight, hey, I'm not coming here for a decision. And yeah, yeah, sure. Jerome was yeah. not coming here for a decision. No, he uh, he kept throwing that left hook, I mean, and, and got glory after a while. I didn't think he was going to connect with it because once a guy, once you know a guy's prime weapon, you know, you put your hands up to defend against that. And and we and we 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 seen that today. Good action throughout. There is a lot to digest. The knockdown, the continuance by the referee, the low blows, and then in between, excellent boxing. Might have been a headbutt there before the hook as well. That might have contributed. We'll take a closer look at all this. But Carlos Belderis' first pro loss did not quite make the count. Off with the bang here in Ontario. We're back right after this. Tony Harrison, Jermel Charlo in our main event. 154 pound title on the line, but here we just had a fascinating fight. Carlos Balderas, Rene Giron in what was an outstanding fight. By the way, we heard the official judges had it basically split 48 46 both ways, and one judge had it 47 47. This was a very close fight. Yeah. And we thought that. Let's just take a quick peek. We'll, we'll, we'll do this, Lennox here. Yeah, good right hand. That left hook was landing all night for uh, Jerome. And even though Balderas keeps his right hand up good, he was still getting hit with it. Yeah, usually, like, when a guy has that prime weapon, like that left hook, you and you know it, yeah. and you put your hands up, but you're still getting caught, that's a technical error. I mean... You know, this is something he has to look at when he goes back into training and say, how how did I miss that left hook? And that was Ray Corona again saying, take a step toward me at the end of round three. They continue to trade. 
And then here at the very end, my only question, well, there's the low blow. They both traded low blows, but that was flagrant, and that was a revenge shot from Baldera. No points taken away. And then my only question with the hook that ended it, that ended up being the coup de grace, was, was it a head graze or was it a head butt? Yeah. And I just don't know if it contributed much. To well, the I, I, it was a head graze. Yeah. It wasn't a head butt. I, it, wasn't, I it, was, it was in the midst of, of throwing a punch at the same time. Yeah, I don't think it had any effect on it. I think what really did it was that last left hook. Yeah. Because uh, Balderas had his right hand down. It had, he had it down to his shoulder. He was wide open for that hook that he was getting hit with. And as mentioned, Chiron, even though he's more the slugger if you're trying to put him into categories slugger and boxer Sharon had the advantage in the landed punches was throwing more punches as well and then power punches Sharon with a big advantage as you'd expect 93 to 55 but again he said I'm not gonna let him breathe I'm not coming from a decision I'm coming to destroy and he did just that 20 year old kid comes in kind of on the B side but he says no bring me to the A side fellas I'm 20 years old and I got power in both hands. And Garone had his loss, you know, in his last fight. That was his first loss. And you know what? He probably determined not to let that happen again and came here to win. Amateur national champion in Mexico. Mentioned he turned pro at 16, so he's already had some ups and downs. But this is a career highlight. This no was question. A tough matchup, man. I'll yeah, tell this, you, it was a tough listen, matchup he's for young guys. He's happy about this. I mean, he's very excited about it. Like I said, he's got a wealth of amateur experience behind him. And there's a difficult moment, too. The Balderas family all in there. David Balderas, trainer of his son Carlos, and they're in there in the corner conferring now after his first professional loss. Let's get the official numbers and the announcement from Jimmy Lennon. Well, fans, with a time of 2 minutes 59 seconds in round number 6, our referee in charge, Ray Corona, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout, El Bravo, Rene Tellez Hero. Well, let me ask you this then, fellas. What do you want to see from El Bravo next in the lightweight division, <laughs> right? Hey, time to move up. I mean, big stuff. Look, I mean, that, that, was, a, that was a big confidence boost. Booster, I think, for him. And you he's know. 20.